Ken, speaking of space, what do you call a tick on the moon? <laughs> Lunatic. <laughs> term lunatic came from was because there was a period of time i just heard this the other day there was a period of time where when the moon come out and it was like it would make people believe that certain elements and certain traits of people would come out and they caused scenes and commotions all around villages and towns and once you did that you were dubbed a lunatic because that would let people know when the moon comes out to stay away from you and that's where oh. we got the term lunatic i think some people just don't think the moon has that much to do with people's activities and how they feel. And I'm calling BS on that because if the moon can affect the, the tides of the water and we're 70% water, we're affected. Right. So that is true. So like some people could act or it could alter some people's emotion or emotional yeah. state or mental state. Yeah, for sure. I guess when the, the moon is on. All right. Speaking of lunatic, I'm here with one. <laughs> You're a lunatic. Oh, I just stepped on the dog. I'm sorry. Jesus, you need to start <laughs> over? Look at you. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to this episode of So Much Energy. It's me, Jenny McKinney, and I am here with Lunatic Jeff Jones. John, thanks for having me. Yeah, good times. We are back. Remember Jess last weekend? Yeah, I like Jess. She's, or, that was a well, good... Yeah, last well, show. Yeah, that was a good episode, though. Yeah, it was a lot of good information. It was. She, I liked her. The design of humans. Oh, yeah. And she yeah. did send me my chart. Yeah. Yep, that was pretty cool. Yeah, what's going on this week? Got up the other morning, and my kid sent me a link. And I click on the link, and it's a, a new art. I don't want to say a news article, but it's an article in an online magazine that interviewed him. Oh, sweet. And I asked him, when did that take place? He said, though they interviewed him, he said like two months ago, and he never heard anything about it. Yeah. And then he thought, you know, I'm going to go see, check on their line. And then online was the episode <laughs> that had, or the article. Yeah. And he was like, nobody notified me or anything. He's like, but I'm glad I clicked on because it had come out like four days before that. Oh, go, no doubt. So I clicked on it and read it. Oh, it was awesome. It's from Voyage, Michigan. Yeah. So if you go to voyagemichigan.com, you can see it's a, the life and work with Griffin Jones of Ferndale, Michigan. Sweet. Yeah, he was all sick. It came out really good. Good for him doing an interview and everything. He yeah. said it was his first, uh, like first sit down interview, like with a news, like a reporter type person. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all about him and his band and how they how he got it started and since like when he started it. And cool, I love that. Good stuff. We interrupt this episode of So Much Energy with a WJEN news break. Here's studio reporter Jenny McKinney. All right. In Rio de Janeiro, already notorious for street muggings, corrupt politicians, ruthless militias, and drug traffickers, they have a new public enemy, plushies. Or, more specifically, the joystick-controlled claw machines that dispense them. On Wednesday, Rio police carried out 16 search warrants targeting the machines that elicit exhilaration among children and adults alike. But police said the claw machines defraud users who believe scoring stuffed animals to be a test of skill. In fact, they are games of chance, just like slot machines, and therefore illegal, according to their press office. <laughs> wow. it's <That's> amazing. <laughs> so they're going in to confiscate these claw machines. All right, I'm going to throw it back to you, Jeffy, for some animal news. Awesome. At a zoo in Liaoning province in China, a pair of penguins tied the knot in July with all of the traditional trimming, and they already had their suits. The South China Morning Post reported that the event was held in the Birds Pavilion, with eight banquet tables filled with fish and shrimp and dozens of penguin guests. The breeder gushed that he had watched the couple getting to know each other, falling in love, and then walking down the aisle together. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Penguin. 
And in other animal news, the Ohio Supreme Court ruled on July 25th that, are you ready for this? Bones are a natural part of chicken. So consumers of boneless chicken wings should be vigilant about them while eating that the presence of bones does not constitute a breach of duty on the part of the restaurant or establishment you're eating the boneless wings in. Mm. The Columbus Dispatch reported that the 4-3 decision was derided by Democrats on the court who contended that the question was for one for a jury, not an appeals court. The result in this case is another nail in the coffin of the American jury system, said Justice Michael Donnelly. The case originated with an April 2016 incident in which Michael Birkenheimer felt something go down the wrong pipe while enjoying his wings. Come to find out it was a bone. He sued him in 2017 and now has lost. A bone is considered part of a boneless chicken. Mm. Jen, back to you in the studio. Yes, there is a giant penguin hoax that fooled Florida for 10 whole years. In 1948, what looked like giant three-toed animal tracks appeared, imprinted in the sands of Clearwater Beach, Florida. The prints, about 35 centimeters, or about 14 inches long, and 28 centimeters, or 11 inches wide, appeared to emerge from the sea, taking about four to six foot strides along the beach for a few miles, before whatever creature had made them. Before long, sightings of strange creatures were reported. Students at the flying school claimed they had seen the beast, which looked like a furry log with a boar's head, swimming in the water, while a couple strolling along the beach claimed they had seen a gigantic creature waddling near the water before disappearing into the sea. The tracks were investigated by police, and for reasons that are fairly unclear, who concluded that if a prank, it was one of the most masterful ever perpetrated in that area. Another investigator who later stayed strayed into pseudoscience and cryptozoology conducted his own investigations and the tracks continued to be found over the next decade. It was at this point suggested the culprit of the footprints were a giant penguin. The tracks invariably followed the gentlest gradients even at the cost of considerable meandering. And secondly, they meticulously avoided all possible snags and obstacles, even down to the smallest bushes. There are one and all typical animal traits. So they ruled any possible hoax is unlikely, arguing in favor of that much more plausible scenario that a gigantic penguin was roaming the beach completely unnoticed that any man or body of man could have known about such a wild animal to make these tracks just in his manner as they appear. So flash forward, fast forward, and flash it to 1988 where a local man, Tony Signorini, posed in a big metal in his big metal penguin shoes. Him and his friend, who died in 1969, inspiring them, um, oh, they had seen a, a photo in a of a dinosaur footprint in National Geographic, inspiring them for their decade-long prank. The two created giant, gigantic three-toed metal feet before attaching them to tennis shoes. The two would regularly take out a small rowboat just off the shore before one of them donned the 14 or 30 pound shoes and walked up the beach before meeting the boat further up the coast. To create a long enough stride, for their fictional creature, Signorini would stand on one leg and swing the other to build up momentum for a jump. And then to guarantee their efforts wouldn't be missed, the footprints would often be reported by one of their friends the following day. After his death in 2013, his Signorini's family made sure his obituary included that Tony was famous for being the clear water monster, a hoax that made national news. Good for them, guys. Yeah. Good for them. Good so for people them. people have a lot of time on their hands. Time on their hands. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So back to you, Jeffy. Thanks, Jen. With sports news, have you ever heard of the Merlympics? No. That's right. It's a combination of Mermaid Olympics <laughs> and Geneva, Switzerland. The event in existence since 2015 is designed to prove athleticism among mermaid competitors. At the May Games, Mia Sim, 22 of Provo, Utah, secured her title as the fastest mermaid in the world. Sim has been mermaiding for 10 years at the Merlympics. Athletes must compete in five categories, including ecology, diving to the bottom and picking up trash, underwater posing for photographs, 
rescue that's swimming to save a submerged dummy, all while wearing mermaid or merman gear. It's not a skill that's easily learned, Sim said, as mermaiding. This is a type of restriction on your body. It's very difficult for people to understand. <laughs> she has now been inducted into Team USA and hopes other Utah mermaids will aspire to such heights. And in other sports news, the force is definitely with these folks in Mexico City, students of the Jedi Knight Academy, who meet in a park four nights a week to practice their lightsaber dueling skills, the Associated Press reported June 21st. When students arrive, some of them drop the saber, said instructor Ulysses Vasquez, who's known as the Jedi Master. He said they go on to become excellent athletes and excellent lightsaber fighters and fencers. The sessions, which last for three hours, are based on Jedi and Sith teachings. Vasquez and his best friend, Gabriel Mendoza, opened the academy in 2019, at which point lightsaber dueling had already been recognized by the French Fencing Federation as an official competitive sport. Jen, back to you in the studio. It's called piece of shit. When I see a frog and it takes a hop away from me, it's like, what the fuck, man? (laughs) That's the whole poem. (laughs) I like it. It's classy. (laughs) Yes. Now, in other news, our national treasure, Dolly Parton, Mm. known for a four-letter word, not book, but book. B-O-O-K. Yes. So Dolly Parton's father grew up poor and never got the chance to learn to read. So inspired by her upbringing, the the 78, she is 78 years old, has made made it her mission over the past three decades to improve literacy through her Imagination Library book giveaway program. It's expanded statewide in places like Missouri and Kentucky, two of 21 states where all children under the age of five can enroll to have books mailed to their homes monthly. To celebrate, she stopped Tuesday in both states to promote the program and tell the story of her father, Robert Lee Parton, who died in 2000. In the mountains, a lot of people never had a chance to go to school because they had to work on the farms, she said. They had, they had to do whatever it took to keep the rest of the family going. She was the fourth of 12 children from a poor Appalachian family and said her father was one of the smartest people I've ever known, but he was too embarrassed because he couldn't read. Oh, gosh, she is a national treasure. She is. (laughs) All of her. (laughs) All right, back to you, Jeffy. Thanks, Jen. Encrypted news, weird in the wild. Bigfoot walks among us, or at least among campers in Louisiana. MSN reported June 28th that Natchitoches Parish Sheriff's Office responded to a call for help from a group of campers, high school graduates from Huma, Louisiana, who were celebrating their matriculation. The kids were camping in Kitashi National Forest and told officers they heard growling and saw a five to eight foot tall animal with glowing eyes. Officers were unable to locate the creature, but they escorted the campers back to their vehicles. And in related news, pay no attention to the body in the back seat on the morning of June 22nd after Margot Lewis, 32 of North Liberty, Iowa, crashed her car in Olmstead County, Minnesota. Police arrived at the scene. The Des Moines Register reported that they discovered the dead body of a 35-year-old Liara Ty, Minneapolis, in the back seat. Ty was wrapped in a bed sheet, a blanket, a futon-style mattress, and then a tarp. Court documents said. Police said Ty also had a large wound on the right side of her neck around the cartoid arc. The medical examiner determined that size injuries were not related to the motor vehicle accident. <laughs> Lewis was arrested for interference with a dead body. Her unconditional bond was set at $1 million. Jen, back to you. Whoa! Speaking of things you don't want to see... Hundreds of people in various states of undress cruise the streets of Philadelphia to cheers of onlookers Saturday, the evening of the 15th annual Philly Naked Bike Ride. The annual ride, which started in 2009, is billed as promoting cycling as a key form of transportation and fuel conscious consumption. It is also meant to encourage body positivity. Organizers stress, however, that participants aren't required to ride completely in the buff, telling them to get as bare as you dare. 
Organizers said the ride wasn't limited only to bicycles, but welcomed all forms of human-powered transportation, such as rollerblades or skates, skateboards, and scooters. They also point to a code of conduct that bars any kind of physical or sexual harassment. The course changes each year, but generally highlights city landmarks. This year, riders assembled in the city's large Fairmount Park, getting some getting some getting themselves adorned with body paint before starting a 12-mile route down the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, past historic City Hall to Tony Rittenhouse Square, and then into South Philly before heading back north, around the U.S. Mountain ending in West Philadelphia, near Drexel University. The ride used to be held in September, often in temperatures around 70 degrees, but enough of the naked riders mentioned feeling chilly that it was moved to August several years ago. <laughs> Naked bike riding is not something you want to see or do. I don't know what is happening. I would do it. And if I did it, I would like for it to be in August, not July. I would... I don't... I wear padded shorts. So, I feel like a bike seat should not be anywhere... Not to mention, padded shorts is like the opposite of naked. Not only is that not <laughs> naked, that's like putting on extra layers. Like a snowsuit on your bike. I don't know about you, but when I'm riding my bike, which is like a 77 Schwinn, the first thing I think is, I got way too many clothes on for this. This is too much. Well, you're already in your shorty shorts, so you're already halfway there. You got, you got a mesh, you got a mesh shirt, like mesh your crop little crop top. <laughs> it says 100, 101% <laughs> man, and on the back, number 86. <laughs> All right, Jeffy, give us some health news. Thanks, Jen. Gizmoda reported on July 19th that a few days before in Puerto Viejo, Ecuador, doctors removed an obstruction from a 24-year-old woman's stomach that has caused her pain, vomiting, and difficulty eating. The object was a 16-inch long hairball that weighed two pounds. Verdi Savalos, bald the general hospital, announced the mass was so large that it could be detected by the touch of the stomach from the outside said Gross. lead surgeon pedro lovato it had started to move into her intestines but the doctor said it had not caused serious injury to her stomach and she would recover the hairball was likely caused by trichophagia nope the hairball was likely <laughs> caused by trichophagia hang on trichophagia i'm gonna say i'm gonna go tricho trichophagia the hairball was likely caused by trichophagia a form of disorder, a form of disordered eating where people swallow their. Hang on. <clears throat> you know, Christ Almighty. Up. The hairball was likely caused by trichophagia, a form of disordered eating where people swallow their hair. The patient is receiving comprehensive treatment, mental and physical. Please and thank you. Good. That's it for me, Jen. I'm going to throw it back into you in the studio. All right. Speaking of health news, New Zealand Food Bank distributes candy made from a potentially lethal amount of methamphetamine. Whoopsie. Mm -hmm. Trick or treat. <laughs> in Wellington, New Zealand, a charity working with the homeless people in Auckland unknowingly distributed candies filled with potentially lethal dose of methamphetamine in its food parcels after the sweets were donated by a member of the public. Auckland City Mission said Wednesday that staff had started to conduct a contact up to 400 people to track down parcels that could contain the sweets which were solid blocks of methamphetamine clothes and candy wrappers three people were treated in the hospital after consuming them but were later discharged the amount of methamphetamine in each candy was up to 300 times the level someone would would usually take and could be lethal according to the drug foundation which is a drug checking and policy organization that first tested the candies. Ben Burks, a foundation spokesperson, said disguising drugs as innocuous goods is a common cross-border smuggling technique and more of the candies might have been distributed throughout New Zealand. The sweets had a street value of 600 608 US dollars per candy, which suggested the donation by, was by an unknown member of the public was accidental. The city missioner, Helen Robinson said eight families, including at least one child, had reported consuming the contaminated candies since Tuesday. The revolting taste led to most of them immediately spitting them out. 
300 times the the regular dose of a methamphetamine i mean i don't yeah, know what's but... the regular dose I don't... is that like equivalent like instead of just eating like one sour patch eating like 300 sour patch Kids. i mean that like burned your tongue yeah yeah what happened it, not only that it's candy so you're probably getting diabetes you're you're gonna instantly have meth mouth, right? Because it's oh, 300 yeah. times. It's like all your teeth yeah. just fall out instantly. It's like you just did meth 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like 298 more than anybody should. <laughs> You're so stupid. Well, I think everybody should try it once or twice. And now, back to our regularly scheduled podcast that's already in progress. Right? <laughs> Just happy to be here. Oh, man. All right. Speaking of happy to be here, mom and dad will be here tomorrow. So. Oh, yeah. Good luck which, with that. Yeah. Which I think will you be... guys have a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It should be. I'm. Don't tell them, but it's supposed to rain. I really hope it doesn't for both days. We'll find out. We're going to. We're going to a Celtic festival. I don't know. Mom and dad tend to brighten up the place when they get there. <laughs> We got dad his own popcorn maker to put by his chair. Like, it's oh, like a little sweet. personalized popcorn maker. Like, you just put kernels in? Yeah. And then you can just pop it. I was like, the thought of him popping it in, like, the middle of the night, pissing mom off, was making me laugh. Andrea <laughs> so told me to give him, you know, he goes and fills up his bucket at the theater. Yeah. I told him to give him our bucket so they can go there and fill up two of them. And I keep forgetting it. Anytime oh, I've shoot. seen him or I go or he's either oh, one, I forget God, to give Oh, my God. He him. would freak out. So he's got two buckets. Yeah. Or at least if he makes it now, like even with his bucket, he can pop it right into his own bucket. With your yeah. Maker. He'd be like, oh my God, I can make oh. this all by myself. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I got him like this little skeleton too. It's like this tall. Nice. And then uh, I got mom a candle. It says, <laughs> from your favorite child. <laughs> I didn't get her a candle. <laughs> She's going to know it's from me. She'll be like, oh, did Jeffy send that here? I'll oh, punch her you right in the yeah. mouth. <laughs> right in it. Spindy getting blasted. <laughs> oh, you want to hear something real stupid? They don't even know this. So we ordered, we were getting a new dining room table, and I put our other one on Facebook Marketplace. And then Mom buy it? No. no. Oh, she buys a lot of shit on there. I know. No. But um, so I called to see when it was going to be delivered. And they're like, hey, it's it's pushed out for like two and a half weeks. And then I went to take the posting off Facebook Marketplace. And the guy's like, hey, I'll, I'll be there to pick it up. Can you meet me? And so we sold the table. And now we don't have a table. That happened to us here. Honest. I mean, something kind of like that. We knew we were getting new furniture. So I asked... <laughs> asked a friend of ours or well actually a friend of ours was here and we were talking about getting new furniture and they're like yeah. what are you doing with your couch and chair now which yeah. they're still in good condition we're just tired of looking at them yeah i go i don't know nothing i'm probably gonna take it and donate it they're like i'll take it I'm like really like yeah i'm like can you pick it up next weekend they're like yeah 100 percent. so they came picked it up our furniture wasn't here yet we were sitting on an office chairs <laughs> <laughs> we were and then then the couch showed up and then we were only sitting on the couch with still had an office chair in there rolling because yeah. we kind of needed to hold the place of another chair so we knew the what for the right. layout of the house you know what yeah. i mean and then the other chair showed up so it yeah. worked out but we were yeah we That's... had no kitchen table i gave him my kitchen table because i knew we were getting a new one so when right. he came and got the couch i just gave him the kitchen table and chairs i'm like yeah you're good we'll get yeah. one yeah yeah and then you know then she ordered it and kind of the same thing they said like oh two to seven days i'm like well I'll just go without a table for a week it was only yeah. like two days it showed up Oh no, ours was like supposed to be three weeks. Now it's six weeks. And then, cause I was like, oh cool. It'll be here before they get here. And I'm all excited. And then we had to pull out. So we just pulled in the deck table from like that we sit outside. <laughs> we just put it in there. I said, nice. what if we just get like little TV trays with ch personal chairs and then we can put dad in like time out if he's, yep. you know, and then, but just little TV tables and then we can all move around. Like if we want to be in a circle or a square or, you know, <laughs> you can move <laughs> wherever you want. I should set him up just so when he gets here to see his face, like what? Just put all the ta all of them together. <laughs> oh, in a line? Like we're just all in a line. <laughs> like a bar. <laughs> He'd be like, what the 
fuck? No, it just tell them everybody sits every other direction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like musical chairs, but musical tables. Yep. And then you can go anywhere you want. And you should even be like, I'll be back. I got to go to the bathroom. And just take your whole, t- cha- <laughs> whole table with you. And he's like, where are you going? Be like, what? This I can still I could reach this from the toilet. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're just gonna sit. That's a good idea. Why don't we keep TV? Di- we should keep TV trays in the bathroom by the toilet. I, I don't think that's sanitary. Oh, I don't yeah. think when I eat my cereal in there, it's sanitary. But I still I don't do. Think so I mean, you still drink coffee in the shower. I drink coffee in the shower. There's a lot of unsanitary shit going on in that bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeffy. Well, right. good times. We'll let you know how it goes next time. All right. Good luck with that. Okay. I'll see you. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs>